Hi friends, our next topic is semiconductors. Devices in which control flow of electrons can be obtained are the basic building blocks of any electronic circuit. So, we need control flow of electrons or control flow of charges. For that purpose, there were vacuum tubes in olden days, uh, which can also be called as valves. But they are of low efficiency, they consume more power, and they had many disadvantages. So, later they found that semiconductors can also do the same job that is, they can also give control flow of charges and they consume less power and they have a uh, very small size. So, these are uh, advantageous in all respects. So, uh, let's get to know some properties of these semiconductors in this chapter. First of all, how to differentiate semiconductors from other materials? All the materials can roughly be classified into three groups. One is those with very high conductivity and low resistivity. They are they are conductors. Uh, normally they are metals. Say this very low resistivity and high conductivity. And the other end, the other extreme, those with high resistivity and low conductivity. They are known as insulators. They have very less number of uh, charge carriers. That's why they don't conduct electricity. And those materials which are having intermediate values of conductivity and resistivity between these two they are known as semiconductors observe this both the values of uh, resistivity and conductivity are intermediate to those of metals and insulators this is uh, based on the values right values of conductivity and resistivity now uh, this classification of metals insulators and semiconductors can be done on the basis of some other uh, property also According to Bohr's model of atom, the energy of an electron depends on which orbit it is present, right? But that is for an isolated atom. Uh, whatever atoms we are dealing with, they are present inside compounds, right? So there are many, many atoms. When atoms are placed close together, the energy of particular electron, it not only depends on its uh, home atom or on its atom in which, in which it is present, but it also depends on the surrounding atoms because here also there are electrons here also there is a nucleus positive charge and there are many many atoms right so the energy of particular atom depends on its location or surrounding other way of saying it is that this particular electron's energy is different from this particular electron's energy that is every electron has a different environment inside a compound or inside a molecule Inside the crystal, when we are dealing with large cluster of atoms, there are many many atoms, right? So, inside that crystal, each electron has a unique position. Observe that. And, no two electrons see exactly the same pattern of surrounding charges. So, what can we say? Because of this, each electron will have a different energy level. Observe this. Say this axis or say this line represent some energy values here is some energy one one electron volts two electron volts in that way say this is an infinite line which gives energies now i want to plot uh, energies of all these electrons if there are some electrons first i'll say uh, there is one electron which has this energy so i'll draw a line there there may be another electron which has this energy so i'll give a line here so uh, when i give energies in this way if there are four electrons I'll give four lines, right? Because they are having different energies. But in a crystal or in a compound, uh, in a bulk material, there are there are billions of electrons. So, and energy difference between, say, this electron and this electron may be very less, but it is different, right? So, the lines which represent those two electrons' energies will be very close, of course, but they will be different. And how many lines should I draw? They are not infinity, but they are equal to the number of electrons present in that bulk material. So, that will be equal to some order of 10 power 23, 10 power 24 or something like that. So, that is too much. There will be many, many lines like this. Observe that. So, instead of calling them as cluster of lines, we have something called as band. We normally say that this is a band that is a continuous energy variation, right? So, you call this as a band and all the energies given by the lines of this band correspond to the valence electrons energy. Valence electrons are those which are present in the outermost orbit of the atom. 
Hence, these are the energies that are uh, representing the energies of valence electrons. So, this is known as valence band. Hope everything is clear till now. Okay. Now, all these electrons are bounded to the atoms, right? If I supply some thermal energy, say one electron comes out. That is, we pull out the electron from the influence of atom. Other way of saying it is that the electron is ionized. It is free from atom now. Now, these are the electrons that are useful for us. Uh, they help us in in, uh, in in conduction of electricity. They are the charge carriers, right? So, we are interested in this free electrons that are out of the influence of atom. Say, there are some free electrons inside this crystal, say. Now, they will also have some energy, right? Of course, they will be having some higher energy. So, I will plot the energy of one free electron. This will be it. And there are many many free electrons also. So if I plot the energies of all the free electrons, there also I am going to get a continuous energy variation that is nothing but a band. And this is of electrons, free electrons or conduction electrons, right? So that is called as conduction band. And of course, this will be higher than the valence band. And there is some difference. Note that that is known as... Uh, band energy difference or band gap so this will give you a better idea this is how energies are represented so if the electrons is a valence electron that is bound to atom it will be any of the lines present in here now if it is a free electron or conduction electron it will be somewhere here now here is the golden question say there is an electron here uh, given by this line okay uh, and say this energy corresponds to some 10 electron volts just uh, as an example I'm saying and say the least energy of uh, this conduction band say this line corresponds to 15 electron volts now uh, electrons get some thermal energy right if I heat them or something like that if this electron gets 5 electron volts energy it will go here it will be free out of the atom that is it will conduct now that's fine, but what if I give two electron volts to this, this uh, two electron volts to this electron? It should be here, right? But you see that this is a band gap. That is, we we found no electron which is having this energies which are intermediate to this ten and fifteen. So no electron should be present here. This is forbidden region. So where will this particular electron go if I give it two or three electron volts energy? Mm -hmm. The answer is you can't give two or three electron volts to that particular electron because you can't specifically point out any electron in the crystal, right? You can hardly heat the crystal or give some net thermal energy in some lump sum amount and that will be distributed among electrons. Well, that's fine, but it will be distributed in such a way that either this electron will get five or more or if you are giving two electron volts that will be distributed in this way these electrons may get these places little higher little higher so all the distributions are are happened in that way that all the electrons take only these places either in valence bond band or conduction band that is why we found no electron having these energies and this band gap or why is the distance like this it depends on the nature of the material each material will have a different band gap and that is a specific property of material well basing on that band gap or basing on the this difference and a difference between conduction band and valence band we can also classify materials as insulators semiconductors and conductors those materials which are having very very large band gap they are known as insulators and those materials which are having no band gap or Sometimes they overlap even this way. That is, uh, some electrons have those values which are fit to be what? Being valence electrons and they can also act as conduction electrons. Both the electrons have same values. That is, other way of saying it is that the electrons can conduct just like that, uh, coming out of the atom. That is, that happens with metals, right? Because metals give out electrons very, very easily uh, that are present in the outermost orbit. So, that happens with uh, conductors. Hence, they are conductors and those materials with band gap intermediate to these two, they are semiconductors. This even makes sense, right? Because for pulling out electrons, we need to give some energy. So, 
these are the electrons present in the valence band you have to give some energy so that they become conduction electrons and if the energy is too high huge band gap then they can't be excited and they can't be free electrons and hence they act as insulators that happens with uh, plastic or rubber any insulating material and conductors best examples are metals and semiconductors in which we are interested they can act as insulators as well as conductors depending on the uh, on the situations like if you are giving some thermal energy yes we can excite electrons and they can act as conductors otherwise they can act as insulators also that is why they can control the charge flow and we are interested in them now this is the other way of classifying the materials as insulators conductors semiconductors basing on the energy bands hope everything is clear till now uh, and in the next video we'll discuss about the types of semiconductors and more properties of them uh, hope you enjoyed this video keep watching bye